And we are live. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2022. It's my first live stream of the new year. And I wanted to just welcome everybody back again here on the channel. Uh, A lot of things to talk about. Uh, CES 2022 just wrapped up here in Las Vegas. And uh, it was a very interesting uh, CES. A lot of things announced, especially for the PC world in terms of laptops, desktop PCs, and so forth. A lot of good stuff. I can't get to everything today, so we may have to do uh, break it up into different uh, videos and so forth. But we'll talk about a couple of big ones that were announced. I did go to New York uh, twice. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to Dell uh, to see the Dell, Dell XPS lineup here for 2022 in New York City. That was a very nice, nice event. And then I came back here, did some stuff here for CES 2022 here in Las Vegas. Uh, since Lenovo pulled out, I then went to New York to meet with Lenovo for their showcase of their new stuff. A lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff announced. So let's get to it right as we say. Uh, we can probably kill the music. And let's say hello to a few people. I saw that we have Constantine here. Uh, Happy New Year. Good to see you. Good to see Tech Realm. Happy New Year. 2022 is here. And hopefully we'll have a great year. Mustafa, hello. Steve, uh, good to see you, my friend. Been waiting for this live stream. Yeah, it's been a while. This is our first live stream here of the new year. So we have a lot to talk about. And we got Max Roblox. Uh, you're you're in time, my friend. You're in time. So good to see you. Um, we said hello to Steve. And yeah, in the wake of the new MacBook Pros, I thought Intel was finished. But the new 12th gen chips are looking very good. They're very special. Yeah, uh, I got some hands on time. Uh, there are certain things I think I can talk about still, but uh, I got to play with the Dell XPS 13 Plus. I got to play with all the Lenovo stuff, the ThinkPad Z 13, the 16, the ThinkBook Gen 3. So it all is looking good. Good to see Raphael here. Um, let's see who else. I don't want to miss anybody here. Good to see William Cohen once again. Uh, Happy New Year, my friend. And yes... Monday is going to be my 22nd anniversary of my 28th birthday birthday, uh, on Monday. In other words, I'm going to be 50 years old. So that is going to be a big one. Uh, Bobby's here. We've got Juventus OS. Good to see you. Uh, We've got, uh, we saw Max already. Pavel, good uh, good to see you, my friend. Early, yes, you're in early. It's good to see you. Tech for Your Needs is in the house. Good to see you. Dimitri's here. Mark is here. Alex M is here with the New York Italian accent. Yeah, forget about it. Forget about it. All right. Okay. (laughs) And Constantine likes a studio. Yeah, I have a studio tour. We're going to talk about that very soon. A lot of new laptops at CS 2022. Absolutely, Raphael. So let's get into it. If I missed you, we'll try to get you in the live stream here. Uh, We have right now... We have 46 of you watching. Let's get the like button hit, people. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. Uh, If you're not already subscribed, I got a lot of great stuff here for 2021. You don't want to miss it. This is going to be a big year for laptops, big year for PCs in general. Uh, Very, very exciting. Uh, Maybe a rejuvenation, in a sense, of the PC world. It's going to be very good. Uh, If you're not a member of the channel, you might want to consider it. I'm going to be doing a lot of members-only stuff very soon. Uh, I'm revamping that. So if you want to help support the channel on a monthly basis, uh, hit that join button. It really helps out, and anything helps in terms of support. And then, of course, you have uh, the super chats and super stickers here in the live stream. That certainly helps support the channel. You get priority in terms of me answering your questions or taking a look at your comments. All right, so... Uh, Tech Realm wants to know, what do you think of the XPS 13 Plus's trackpad, especially since it's haptic and matching with the palm rest? So I got a chance to look at it, Tech Realm, and let's take a look at it um, real quick here. Um, Let me bring up this video here, and let's go to this. And this is, and actually this picture, you can actually see um, what I'm talking about here. Uh, This is the Dell XPS 13. This is a photo I took. Uh, I'm getting it off Google Photos because I didn't download it, but you can get the picture here. It's a there's no differentiation between the palm rest and the touchpad, right? So it is a haptic touchpad, and the limited time I had with it, it actually worked pretty well. Um, let me put myself down there, and I didn't find it uh, bad in any way. In fact, I thought it was actually pretty responsive. Again, a pre-production unit, so it's hard to tell what the final shipping unit will provide in terms of that experience. 
but a very interesting design. Now, the thing you're going to want to know about this is the fact that uh, they are going to a 28-watt CPU, and hence you're going to get that um, touch bar, that capacitive touch bar that Apple went away with. Now, of course, they took that away, but one thing to note, and I'm not really supposed to show you what's on the right of that, but that's okay. Uh, you can see here that the capacitive buttons are all uh, lit up. Now, they're flashing only because of my camera that I had with me. Uh, they don't flash in real life. They're solid. And they were pretty responsive on the limited time that I used it. Uh, but pretty interesting that they went with that. And I asked them, why did you go with that? Why not traditional keys in that sense? Uh, because Apple failed in that regard, remember, with the touch bar. And the reason they went with that is because they said that it was going to be better, uh, more room, because they are putting a more powerful uh, p uh, chipset in it. Again, a 28-watt P-series, which is new this year, 12th gen Alder Lake. And I'm pretty interested to see the benchmarks. I couldn't benchmark it or anything. They were there. I, I couldn't do it. Uh, I had to obey, obey the rules there. Uh, but I, I did get to use it a little bit. I did get to work on it a little bit. The keyboard I actually do like. It's actually got pretty decent key travel, though p appearances would look like it might have shallow key travel. But I thought it was actually pretty good. That keyboard would be horrible to type on. Oh, Bobby, no. I actually thought it was actually pretty good. I, su I was surprised by that. Not too bad. Once I get a review unit into the studio, and I will, uh, I'll talk more about it, but the keyboard's not bad at all. Let me see if I have another video here that I can show you on this. Um, here's another one, and I think this is uh, just a little quick video there, but you get the drift here. Now, let me put this here. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put that on there. So this is, in, this is the white color, and... As you can see me using the keyboard there, I'm trying to figure out the um, key travel on it. Uh, not bad, not bad. Again, the reason they went with this is because they're doing this to get more headspace, more room within the internals to get that 28 watt CPU. And again, that's gonna draw more power and battery life should be interesting. Now they didn't re have to make it a bigger device because of this. They're keeping it the same weight and size pretty much. So you're going to be okay in that regard. All right, let's take some uh, let's take some questions here. So they use PWM for lighting on the keys. How hard is it to blend DC controls? I don't know. No, that well, yeah, the camera picked up on that flashing, but in real life you don't see it. So uh, the reality is, in the practical sense, I would prefer regular keys. We don't, you know, on, on the engineers had to, it is an engineering sample event. This The engineers on this uh, needed to get more space internally to have more room for cooling and to have a more uh, robust CPU. And that's what they did. Um, according to D, haptic trackpads and window laptops are now mainstream. Obviously looking forward to something like the XPS 15 plus. This will be absolutely fantastic. Now, I don't know if you caught it in the video, and I, I'm not really about to show it. There is two more laptops next to that. They're not the XPS 15, I can tell you that right now, uh, that they're not announcing yet. But so I had the two colors of the XPS uh, Plus, and then I had next to that um, two more laptops I can't talk about. But anyway, uh, for those that don't want this version, stay tuned. There may be another one. That's all I can say. Now, where is the trackpad? All right, let's talk about this. So um, let me go back to this photo. Let me go back to this video, rather. Um, and you can get a better sense. And I'm going to do a bit. I'm, I'm actually doing a, an actual video on this. Ignore that upside down for a moment. Uh, look, so, OK, let's see. The touchpad is going to be OK. Let's pause it there. So the touchpad is going to be between the alt key and on, on both sides of the uh, touch bar. So it's like a normal touchpad size, a pretty nice size. It ends there. I already figured that out when I used it. Uh, the rest of it is just uh, regular palm rest. And it was pretty comfortable. I had no issue. It's like almost a matte finish. It's a beautiful looking laptop. I can't argue with that. Uh, questions, is, and now the other thing you're gonna wanna know, no audio jack, no 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and that is gonna piss off a lot of people, I am sure. Uh, especially people will use wired headphones, and now you're gonna have to use an adapter. Taking a page out of Apple's book, playbook, but Apple got, got you know, actually are putting some of this stuff back. They, they put physical keys back as opposed to the touch bar and stuff like that. 
The invisible touch trackpad of the XPS looks unfinished. Now, again, these are engineering samples, again, pre-production. So we don't know what the final shipping unit is going to look like. Um, my guess is, is this is pretty final, I would imagine, at this point. So it's a matter of getting used to it. I, I thought it was very responsive as far as the touchpad, the haptics on it working well. The one on the right has regular physical buttons. Right. So you're not, Sarthik, you weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> and we're going to leave it at that on that, okay? So uh, <laughs> the, the lack of a physical edge between the palm rest and the trackpad makes it seem like it could be a problematic to use. Again, I didn't feel like that would be the case. I did use it briefly. Again, engineering sample, pre-production. So take it for what it's worth. I kind of liked it, to be honest with you. I didn't think I would, but using it has been good. See what? Duck Vision, I'm... <laughs> So, okay, so if you see on this video, there are two laptops that I'm looking at. One is in the darker color and one is in the, the white color. Those are the XPS 13 Plus. There are two other laptops situated next to it. I'm going to stop it there. Uh, and that's where we're going to end that. As I can't talk more about that. When are they going to be launching? So these are going to be launching, uh, I think, in, in April, I believe. Let me just double check that. I think April, or I think it was April or may i don't remember but uh, i'll get you that information once um i get more info you know once they do give me an actual date um i think it's going to be in the spring is what they told me i was joking uh, like you didn't say i got i got to see what good you, you got my drift there that's good <laughs> <laughs> all right so it looks like we have 67 of you watching and we've got um <laughs> Uh, lo looks like everybody is here today. They're pretty interested in it. We had a pretty good turnout so far. Do me a favor, and as Raphael is saying here, hit the like button, people. Let's uh, hit that subscribe. Share it to my channel. Check out some of the videos. Uh, check it out, and I would really appreciate it. Good to see Christine Roy here. Looks great for Intel with the new architecture. Yes, I'm very impressed with the 12th gen Alder Lake. I don't need more performance, but hoping for great battery life. And that's going to be the key here, I think. With this more, with this better performance, we're hoping to get more efficiency uh, in terms of better battery life. And I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised in that regard. Again, I don't have a unit yet, but I will soon hopefully and i will be able to benchmark it now steve is saying he likes the fact that dell is not remaining complacent not sure if the design is a winner though this is controversial and again i can't talk to you what was next to that <laughs> but if you get my drift this is a controversial move with this xps 13 plus and we'll get to lenovo in a moment but this is a really interesting design. Aesthetically, I think it's sleek looking. I like the edge-to-edge -edge keyboard. I like this the way it, it looks. It's a very nice looking laptop. Practically speaking, we'll have to see how that capacitive touch bar does. We'll have to see how that haptic, um, uh, touch, uh, the haptic uh, touchpad will perform in long-term use. Again, pre-production unit. These are engineering samples. So there you go. Yeah, now the battery is going to be the, I think it's going to be the same or maybe even slightly bigger at a, as far as what the current model, the 9310. And they're, they're telling me the physical shape and everything is going to be the same. They're not going bigger, despite the fact that they're putting in a more robust 28-watt GPU. Uh, the XE graphics are going to be even enhanced with this Alder Lake. We're going to talk more about that very soon. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Yes, so I did see gaming laptops uh, at this Dell event. I saw gaming laptops at the Lenovo event and, of course, at CES 2022. So many things we're going to have to talk about. So I might have to do multiple videos on this, maybe multiple live streams if the turnout and the reception is good. Uh, but really, I, I am very impressed so far. I think Intel is making a big, big splash here. Uh, a lot of people wrote them off last year, including myself in some way. Um, not so fast, like I said, not so fast. Uh, they do have fans, and I didn't really notice the fan. Again, the environment was a little bit noisy. I didn't notice it, it, it to be anything... Um, bad or anything like that again i didn't benchmark it i didn't really run too many things i just got a very limited time with it but and again engineering sample pre-production software is not totally 100 percent yet so the drivers are not optimized yet so really i can't comment comment on it until i get a review unit into the studio 
So I did ask uh, Ritap, I did ask Dell, is there any possible AMD versions? And like they didn't, they said, they, ne they don't say no, they don't say yes. They just say, you know, always a possibility. Now I didn't, they didn't announce anything with AMD as far as that unit is concerned, but uh, I hope to see, it would be nice to have it, especially with these Ryzen 6000 series that was announced that I'm looking forward to, these Ryzen Pros and so forth would be interesting. Here is the hope that AMD can actually deliver their chips to laptops. I heard that the Ryzen 5000 is still scarcely available. Bobby, always been a problem with uh, supply, obviously. Uh, 6000, they just announced, so uh, too early to tell whether they're going to have supply shortages. Hopefully, they won't. We're, we're looking forward to these 6000 chips. We'll talk about that in just a moment when we get into the Lenovo stuff, especially the Z series that with the ThinkPads that I got a chance to play with as well. And I will review uh, the Asus G14 this year. Um, I'm trying to do more Asus stuff. Asus made a few announcements as well. We can't cover everything today, so I will have to do either another live stream, multiple videos to go over everything. Raymond is saying, I hear the capacitive row doesn't have haptics. How was the experience pressing the buttons? No, they don't have haptics on it. Uh, as far as the capacitive buttons, they seemed fine. Uh, they worked. Like if you want to control volume or brightness and so forth, they worked. I didn't have any issues. It didn't. There was no delay or anything. So it was pretty responsive. Again, like I said, engineering sample. I don't know what the final shipping unit is going to uh, produce as far as uh, experience is concerned. But we will see once I do get it uh, into the studio. Okay. So Andrew, your assistant who knows of Andrew and your assistant who knows of me, your 88 year old lady friend got a, um, a Asus 17 given to me your, for Dr. Zoom, just as husband died question, keyboard not too lit up, cannot see keys. Oh, I remember you. Are you Granny E? I remember you, Granny E. Um, so you have a problem um, with the Asus 17. You got a used one. Somebody gave it to you. And now you're, um, just as the husband died, sorry to hear that. That's my condolences. Question, keyboard not too lit up, cannot see keys. You might be able to adjust it in the settings. Maybe there's a key on the keyboard uh, that allows you to do that. I don't have one in front of me, but uh, my ma you could probably do it within the settings. Look for the display settings. You might be able, uh, not display settings, the keyboard settings. You might be able to do that. There might be a button or key on the keyboard. All right, good to see you. All right, I hear that the capacitive row, we talked about that. Let's keep going. Um, Asus ZenBooks, according to Sarthic, are looking pretty good. Thank God they moved on from that uh, concentric circle design. Yeah, they had some new stuff. I'm going to be talking about that separately. And good to see Granny E here. Good to, we haven't heard from you in a long time. Hope you've been well, feeling good. All right, last I heard, MacBook users were required to run experimental versions of Parallels and were limited to Windows on ARM. It could not run x86 anywhere near native performance. Uh, yeah, right. So they were using that um, Rosetta, whatever, the emulation and so forth. Uh, Windows on ARM version could not run x86. Uh, well, that's changing. They do have that in beta. I don't know if they officially released that. I'm hoping to see more strides this year with Windows on ARM. Hopefully, we'll see that. So we got 78 of you. Hit that thumbs up, people. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. Uh, 81 of you actually watching right now. All right, so that's the Dell 28-watt uh, CPU, Core i7. You can get it with a Core i5. It's going to be 12th gen. This is a P series, which is new. So you got the U series, which is the Ultrabook type things. You got the H series, which is the more uh, performance-based uh, laptops and so forth. And then, of course, the P series is going to be somewhere, I guess, in between, I guess, uh, something to that effect with a 28-watt CPU. And that's a big deal. And... Um, and that's, again, why they went with those capacitive buttons on the top. And that's why they made some of these design choices to get more room internally to allow for more cooling, to have, a again, a more robust uh, CPU. All right. So let's... Uh, so. Dell also announced other stuff there. We're gonna have, I'm gonna have a separate video on that. I wanted to emphasize the XPS 13 there. Uh, we're gonna talk more about Dell in a separate video that I will be talking about as I put all this footage together that I got in New York. Now, 
I also went to New York again two weeks later. I left Las Vegas during CES 2022, and I went to the Lenovo uh, showcase as far as CES 2022. And I've got a lot of stuff to talk about here with Lenovo. Uh, let me get to some of that. Let me, let me, let's show a video first. And we're going to talk about the ThinkBook Z13. Um, and if we go here, and let's go full screen. So Z13, let's take a look at this quick video from Lenovo, and I'll give you my footage as well in a moment. And using rece recycled aluminum, renewables as far as the packaging, pretty impressed with that actually. Ryzen 6000 series U, APUs uh, 6000 series, very good. Radeon graphics, ThinkPad design, obviously, but with some changes, we'll talk about that, what's different. It's got a really nice camera, by the way, and we'll talk more about that. And the Dell had a good camera. I couldn't show it because it's not finished on that XPS 13. But as far as this Lenovo is concerned, the pretty interesting stuff on that Z13 and a Z16, by the way. So let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit. And you can see here, really nice ThinkPad design. It's a very um, thin design. Actually, let me go to my, my footage of it, which I got. Let's keep going up here. All right, so we'll talk about this uh, ThinkBook in a moment, but we got the ThinkPad here. So, let me talk about, so let's start off, let's start off with this. This is the Z13, uh, not the 16, although it says it in that. This is the Z13, oh, sorry, sorry, this is the, yeah, this is the Z13. And what you can notice about it, it has the ThinkPad DNA. It's got a really nice keyboard. I don't know, that doesn't look, yeah, that looks like the 16 inch. Hold on, here we go. I got it here. So this, let's take a look at this video. Sorry for the confusion if I caused any. So this is the Z13. It's running the AMD Ryzen 6000 series processor. Um, one thing you'll notice is there's no buttons for the, uh, the touchpad or for the mouse buttons. There are no physical mouse buttons, a little bit different than the other ThinkPads. And that's the Z16. This is the 13, by the way. I was showing you the specs for the Z16. Uh, I'll do a formal video on this so you'll have more information on it. So that was just one quick video there. And then I had some more videos that I took. Um, now, it has a nice vegan leather, um, as you can see here, a vegan leather Q design, design Q. And you could also get it in aluminum. And there is also a black version that's not pictured here. It also will come with an OLED display option, which is going to be absolutely gorgeous. And it also will have, I think, 4G or 5G. I believe it's 4G LTE on this one as an option as well. But I'm really digging the designs here, especially with that vegan leather. Um, it is smaller. That's the 13-inch Ace K. And I thought it looked pretty good. We had 105 of you watching. I like the round, the uh, squared off edges. You can see the antennas for the uh, Wi-Fi and for the 4G or 5G. I'm not sure which one. And the camera has a little bit of a uh, emphasis there, as you can see, emphasizing that it does have a full HD camera. It has some pretty good um, images, actually. And I think I did a video where we showed it. Just got to find where we did that. Okay, here it is, and then, but I think this might be the ThinkPad. Yeah, so this is the ThinkPad Nano. We'll talk about the camera in a moment. But getting back to this, uh, pretty nice. You can get it in a 13-inch version, which is what you see here. And then, of course, you can get it into a 16-inch um, uh, version. And that's going to have an H-series, I believe, processor. And again, no physical mouse buttons. The keyboard looks pretty good on the 16. Uh, this is a very, really interesting one. Again, we don't know anything about battery right now. We don't need, know anything about uh, 20 hours of battery life, if that is actually possible with the RDNA 2 instead of the Vega. Impressive. Intel versus AMD will be a great battle this year. Absolutely great battle. 
Um, and there you go. Full HD webcam on the Z13 is great. Soldered RAM is not. Again, I don't know. Do we know that it's soldered in? I, I asked them. I didn't get a straight answer, but at least they solder all of it instead of the shitty uh, Asus design, soldering one module, having one slot open. So, Bobby, um, remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. You can see the info where I was in New York City and near Gramercy Park, Union Square. Very interesting. Um, good to see everybody. How is everybody doing? For those joining us late, we got 104 of you watching. Welcome back. It's my first live stream of the new year, 2022. I went to New York twice in the past uh, month. I went to see Dell and their 2022 lineup for CES in New York, not Las Vegas. Lenovo was originally supposed to be in Las Vegas last moment. They changed their plans and did it in New York like Dell. I went there. And I got a chance to see uh, both companies' lineups. And I thought it was uh, important for me to do that, not only to see the people that I, I, I deal with uh, throughout the year, and it's nice to see faces and in person, uh, but it was also great to uh, get a chance to look at all this stuff and not have the rush of all the people of CES. It was a nice one-on-one -on -one preview. So I was able to take my time and really explore these devices. I couldn't benchmark them or anything like that because they are pre-production engineering samples, but looking good so far. Now, if I'm going to miss your questions or anything, uh, my apologies, I'm one person. Super chat, super stickers are open. We'll... That will certainly help the channel. Memberships, subscribe, do all, you know, the whole uh, shtick. All right, good to see you. Uh, Jeremy, how are you? Do you know why they got rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack? Kind of a bummer. Many people were outraged. Now, he's talking about the Dell XPS 13 um, Plus that does not have a headphone jack. Uh, it has to do with the, the saving space internally. And it was, space was at a premium. They didn't want to make it bigger. Uh, they wanted to keep it the same size as the 9310. So what they had to do to get a 28-watt CPU, a better cooling system, they needed to make space by cutting out some things. They took away the function row, physical keys. They put in a capacitive row. And they also took away the 3.5-millimeter headphone jack. Very controversial, obviously. People are going to be upset. But I'm curious to see what the 28 watts of power will do. That's a pretty uh, powerful CPU on, especially on an ultra portable like the XPS 13 plus. So it should be pretty interesting to see Jeremy. Uh, Richard Wong is asking, uh, do you think you, it will have 120 Hertz display on the actual production? I, I think it might be actually on this, but again, I don't know the final specs on that 16. I think I showed you the picture of it. Uh, and we'll see, but again, this is all going to depend on a lot um, as far as what they actually ship with. Um, let me see if I have a photo here. I'm just looking. Let me see what this says. This is the uh, carbon. We're going to talk about the carbon. That got upgraded too. But again, I'll have more information as it becomes available. That's the nano. So we'll talk more as I show you. I don't want to skip out of turn. But bottom line is, the design aesthetics of the uh, X1, uh, X, the um, I'm sorry, the Z13 and 16, I'm actually liking. Looks pretty good. Uh, here they are on top of each other, as you can see. Um, the thinness. Uh, oh, I forgot to show you there. Uh, you can see the thinness of it all. You can see basically um, the antenna lines. I like the design. I like the aluminum version. I like the vegan leather version. Let me know what you think about it. So let's talk about the, um, the X1 Carbon Gen 10. So uh, that was another one announced. And um, here it is, and we can go here. So that's, no, that's the Nano. I'm sorry, hold on. I'm not so organized today, but that's okay. Let's see, I think it's this one. So this is the carbon. Now the difference is this is gonna have an OLED option this time around, and it's an OLED option that is uh, glassless. There's not gonna be, unlike other OLED that has glass, this will not have glass. So this is gonna be a really nice matte display, no glare, no reflection. In fact, he showed it against the window with the bright light coming in, and it was pretty good. Physically, pretty much the same as Gen 9. A few design changes here and there, but nothing major. Uh, where you're going to see it is going to be the 12th Gen processor. You're going to see uh, that OLED option, and that's going to be pretty good. I'm very interested in this one. Uh, to me, it's, it's going to be another nice one. 
Um, let me see what else I can show you here. And then these are the specs. And so let me try to um, zoom in on this. And here you can sort of see it there. Oops. Trying to get a, there we go. So you get the 12th gen, you get uh, a 14 inch OLED option. Of course, you can get it as an IPS, Windows 11, up to 32, LP DDR5 RAM. That's another change here. Two terabytes of Gen 4 PCIe SSD storage. You can, that's pretty good as well. Wi-Fi 6E, I think it's Wi-Fi 6E. You got Bluetooth 5.2, 57 watt hour battery. You also are getting the keyboard that we know and love. I still love it, everybody. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports, uh, 2.48 pounds. So it's going to be, again, very portable. Take with you on the go. Uh, it's going to be 1.2 kilograms for those that are in the metric system and so forth or that stuff. Uh, very thin and light. And, of course, it's going to have the weave if you go with the OLED and all that. It's going to be really good. So that was pretty good uh, as far as that. Again, Every two years, they seem to do more radical designs. Here, I can see New York City. I did. I took a few photos there uh, as I was walking at night uh, down around Union uh, Madison Square, around that area, uh, with my Pixel Six Pro. A little bit of light there. It was very dark out. Obviously, uh, this is the room I stayed in uh, while I was there. But anyway. Uh, to get back to things at hand, uh, very impressed with the Z13, Z16. AMD Ryzen 6000 processors, uh, it's going to be very, very good. We, we'll actually get a powerful CPUs in the Carbon lineup. Yes, we're going to get the more powerful uh, CPUs on that as well. Now, they also did show off the uh, ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2. The difference is they're now moving to traditional processors. It had the UP4, I think, last year, a little bit slower, although I thought the performance was good. You're going to get now on par with its bigger brother, the Carbon and the Yoga, uh, better performance, and that's about the only change. The other difference is I believe that one is also getting, an, I believe, an OLED option, but don't quote me on that. And again, like I said on the Carbon, this is going to be OLED uh, glassless, so you're not going to have the glass on it. It's going to actually be better. It's actually pretty gorgeous. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting that into the um, into the studio. More heat? Well, that's always the big question. More power comes more heat. Uh, hopefully, they'll, uh, they'll imp improve the efficiency. They'll improve the cooling solution. We'll see. I thought the Yoga 9i got some nice upgrades. I do have po photos. I got to go through them here. I did look at the Lenovo 9i as well. 109 of you watching. For those of you, hit that subscribe button. Let me get that queued up. Let me see if I can get to those videos. Um, I think that's on this card. Again, I'm going to be doing actual videos of this. It'll be more organized. Um, let me just find it. Okay. Um, give me a second as I get this. Yeah. So here you can see... So let's go here and let me see what this video is. So this is the 7i the to the left. She's holding the Yoga 9i. You can actually see it a little bit here. Uh, it's a little bit more rounded edges, and I can show you a top-down shot as well. Uh, there it is. Um, very, very nice. Yoga 9i, 12th gen processors. Let's pause it there. 12th gen, you can get up. With, and these are P-series, so you're going to get a little bit more uh, power on that. So that's going to be pretty good. Uh, it also has uh, up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5, a terabyte of storage, XE graphics, 71 watt hour battery on the 9i. Hopefully, we'll get good battery life. Four speakers with Dolby Atmos. Uh, you're going to also get a two megapixel full HD IR camera. That's going to be pretty good. Uh, you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Uh, the big deal here is uh, move to the 12th gen. You're also going to get a little bit better, uh, hopefully, better battery life and so forth. Uh, as you can see here, um, and here it is in the darker color, and it'll also have the sound bar. So the 9i, again, coming uh, this spring. I don't have an exact date. I think it's April, end of April, if I remember correctly. And again, you could also get that new color. They're calling it oatmeal. That's the old one, the one on the, she's holding. She wanted to show me the difference. And again, you could see the design changes here, a little bit more rounded edges, uh, 
as opposed to what she's showing you here, uh, more squared off or sharper edges. I actually kind of like these new rounded edges on it. Um, and I believe they're also, the sound bar is still there, obviously, that everybody knows and loves with the 9i, and that's still there. So that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I think the gorgeous look here with the yoga, I like the way it looks. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, keyboard, a few changes as well. Uh, you'll notice that on the right, there's a row there that gives you a lot of quick uh, access to changing the thermal temperature, the thermal um, profile and so forth. That's something new. She's pointing to it. Fingerprint sensor also on that row. Uh, you could change a lot of things on the fly. Kind of like it. Um, let me know what you think about it. Pretty interesting that you have easy access there. Now, here's the problem. The pen silo is not there. So no longer will you be able to store the pen. And that's my big negative takeaway from that. I didn't see a stylus there that you can store in the device. They're now going with Bauer and Wilkins, actually, as far as that sound bar, as opposed to Bang & Olufsen in the past. Uh, sound is supposedly very good. I didn't get a chance to really test it out. Dolby Atmos from last year, correction here. So Bauer's and Wilkins this year in the 9i. So... That's been pretty good. So the pen, again, no silo, no storage of the pen in the device. And that's going to be a little bit controversial as I'm pointing to her feet. Uh, this is a new color right here. This is the oatmeal. Uh, they're calling it oatmeal. It's almost like a, a pale gold type thing. It's hard to show it on the video, but uh, that's pretty much what you're getting on that. They did upgrade the 7i as well. M minor upgrades here. Again, a little bit more rounded edges on Q with the 9i as well. Uh, question, Andrew from Tamor, how is the keyboard on the Z13 and is the OLED screen anti-glare? Yes and yes. The keyboard's good on the 13. I really liked it. ThinkPad keyboard. Uh, OLED anti-glare is looking good. The keyboard with the fingerprints looks difficult to repair. The keyboard with fingerprints, look I don't know anything about that. That would be some somebody in the repair business would have to know that. Uh, I don't know. Was there any updates on the camera performance 2022 and still no laptop is doing more than 1080 30? Let's be happy with 1080 30. It was so, so as opposed to the 720 30 we've been seeing last year. So I'm happy they're even going with the 1080p and, and they've been looking good. I did see a lot of improvements again, pre production looking good. Andrew, did they say when the new XPS 15 will be released? No mention of the 15 at this uh, event. Uh, so stay tuned as that becomes available. We'll know more. Uh, AMD Ryzen 6900HX. Again, uh, I don't know any of the devices will have that. I saw that they do have uh, the Ryzen 7 and some of these on the 6000 series, of course. Uh, again, all just new announcements, a lot of pre-production stuff. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm about to get last year's yoga as an insurance replacement. Your old videos were very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that, Craig. Uh, last year's yoga was fine. This year, they're changing the design a little bit, as you see here, uh, a little bit different, um, as you see. Uh, but again, these are just some of the design changes that the nine Yoga 9 series or the 9i and the 7 series as well. Uh, these are Gen 7, actually, of them. And there you go. Yeah, and the other thing is they're moving to 16 to 10 displays on these as opposed to 16 to 9. So a nice move. And again, a lot of these uh, OEMs are moving to the 16 to 10, and I think that's a that's a really good one as well. Right, Raphael? I, I agree. So I also saw some gaming stuff there. We'll talk about that separately. But I did, I, just for those that are interested, I did check out the new um, Legion stuff, the 5i Pro, the 5 Pro. Uh, there are some design cue changes and so forth. We'll do that in a separate video, separate live stream. But I did look at that, and when I was at Dell, I looked at some of the Alienware. I saw the X14 uh, that they announced, and I saw the uh, updates to the 15 and the 17 and so forth. So we'll, we'll say there. I'm glad you like the work, George. I'm glad I like you like it. Thank you so much. Were there any 1080p webcam laptops? Yeah, these were all 1080p, by the way. They, they moved to 1080p and pretty much across the board. So there you go. 16 to 10 for Office is a big win. I agree. It's a nice blend between productivity, Office, spreadsheets, seeing more on the display, less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. It also is good for consuming media, although you will have slight black bars on the top and the bottom. Uh, that Stuff that's uh, um, made for 16 to 9 will have that, but not a big deal. I think the move to the 16 to 10 is the right move. 
Um, the Dell XPS 13 Plus, I'm talking about, I was talking about Lenovo. On the 13 Plus, it was a, I believe it's still a 720p, but they made improvements to it. Again, I don't know until we get one into the studio to review. On the PCs that are less than 16 inches, the 3 to 2 screen ratio is even better than the 16 to 10. Uh, the HP actually, William, announced the... Um, the new Dragonfly G3, and that one has a three to two aspect ratio, no longer X360. It's now a uh, clamshell. And we're gonna talk more about that very soon as well. Oh, we got our super chat here from Craig Williams, $5. I appreciate the work. I appreciate you for obviously recognizing that. Thank you so much, my friend. I, I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Super chat, super stickers are open, people. If you wanna help support the channel like Craig, it's open, you, no obligation, of course. We got memberships, we've got all sorts of things. We've got 91 of you watching, so far looking good in terms of this live stream. We've got 84 likes, we've got 92 people watching. Um, trying to find, to see what else. I'm just looking through some of the comments right now. Uh, Andrew, didn't Acer... Didn't the Acer Swift X get some upgrades? They did. We're we'll going to be talking about that separately. That was one of my favorite 14-inch laptops of 2021. Great battery life, performance in a 14-inch uh, form factor. So that's been pretty good as far as my dog is barking. Somebody must be at the door. But great battery life in the 14-inch. I absolutely love the my last year that I reviewed with the um, Swift X. I thought it was great. I'm looking forward to testing out some of these upgrades that are coming here. Uh, we'll talk more about that very, very soon. Again, I, there's so many announcements at CES. I'm looking at the wrong camera. So many announcements at CES 2022. Uh, could it, you can't cover it all in one video. I wanted to highlight some of the major stuff. Today, I wanted to focus on the XPS 13 Plus. I wanted to up talk about the ThinkPads, especially the Z, the new Z line uh, series. We're talking about the Z13, the Z16, so that's been pretty good. Um, now, do you think the laptops will be available? I don't know how bad in sca uh, scalping on the laptops. Do you think these laptops will be available? So scalping, for those that are, are curious, so people like take the parts out and sell them, uh, like for instance, I have here, and I just did my video, by the way, if you didn't check it out, of the HP Omen 45L. And in that, I do have an RTX 3090, which are going on the market for about $3,000 right now. The whole la the unit costs 5,000, so people will buy them just to strip the parts and make some profit and so forth. Uh, so maybe that we might see that, I don't know, uh, but that's something to keep an eye on. The AIM Grahook says the XPS 13 Plus is looking good. But any news about the design change in the XPS 17 with the Alder Lake? Um, no, no information on the 15, no information on the 16 uh, aim. Did Dell bound to Intel for the X? Did Dell bound to Intel? Well, I got, I don't know, have any information on AMD as far as being in the XPS line. It wasn't announced. It wasn't told to me by Dell or AMD. So I don't know, but never say never. But Will this be the year we see it? I don't know. That that is that remains to be seen. I I think we would like to see that, right? I think we'd like to see that. According to Jeremy uh, Andrew, didn't Lenovo release the ThinkBook Plus Gen three with that dual display screen? And that leads us to that right now. And I did get some hands on time with that. Let me see if I could find that uh, and then bring it onto the display here. So uh, let's go to the videotape, as they say, and here it is. So this is the um, the ThinkBook. Let's see if I can get it there. Let's just get the picture going here. So the ThinkBook has an eight-inch display on it, actually, and you can see it here. Take away this info. We don't need that. Uh, a, 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 an eight-inch display. It's also got a seventeen-point-three-inch main display with a sixteen to twenty-one. I think it's a sixteen to. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, a 21 to 10 aspect ratio, 17.3. So it's a pretty wide display with that secondary display next to the keyboard on the right side. And as you can see from this, it's a pretty interesting. Now, this was very buggy only because it was pre-production. So I did get a chance to use it. We'll look at it in a video in a moment. But just looking at this uh, picture right here from this photo, you'll see that it's got a lot of the design cues from the previous ThinkBooks, but this is going to have that secondary display as opposed to the e-ink display we saw last year. And um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Let me see if I could find the video here. 
Um, and there it is. Let's see. Let's take a look at it as it loads in. Uh, she's just showing me some of the different stuff. And where you're going to find this as a pretty interesting is for creators doing multitasking and stuff like that. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Should be pretty interesting. Uh, again, I'm left-handed, so having it on the right hand may be a little bit... Uh, uh, not great for me, but uh, again, 17.3 inch IPS main display. And then again, you have that tablet stuck onto the keyboard, basically. Uh, next to it, pretty interesting. You can use both displays. You can actually take a spreadsheet, scroll it down from the main display onto that secondary display. Pretty interesting. We saw something similar, I guess, when with the Asus ZenBook Pros we saw with the second display, although this one is on a vertical as opposed to horizontal. Uh, and pretty interesting. The very nice lady from Lenovo showing me that. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, this is going to come, and I think in May. And here's some of the specs on that for those that are interested. This is going to come with a 12th gen Intel Core processor. Uh, they didn't say which one on this one. It's 17.3 inches, 3K display, 3072 by 1440, 120 hertz display, which is great. It's got the two of eyes safe. Uh, then it has that secondary eight inch LCD touch display, 1280 by 8800. That one has pen support. The main display does not have pen support. Uh, up to 32 uh, gigabytes of LPDDR4, DDR5 RAM, not four, LPDDR5, up to a terabyte of PCIe Gen 4, which is the fast storage, uh, Iris XE. Uh, pretty good. I think it is $1,300. I, I have the starting price here somewhere. There it is. $1,399 starting in May. You'll get it available in May. Uh, so expect that very, very, uh, in a few months, actually. Not very soon, but in a few months. Um, and again, it's a pretty interesting design. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, Bobby's telling Omer, uh, ThinkPad lineup always supported Linux. You can even spec the ThinkPad without OS completely. The dual display, according to William, somewhat gimmick, gimmickry, gimmickry uh, pardon the bad spelling. It's okay, gimmicky, <laughs> gimmickry, I like that. Um, so I didn't use it long enough. I could see some use for it. Again, Photoshop and Lightroom and stuff like that. There are gonna be some applications. Once I get a unit in to review, it is might be more useful than the e-ink display on Gen 2, which I never even released a video on. I did complete it. I just never finished editing it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it at this point with 11th gen. I wanna do everything 12th gen at this point. But there, we'll see. Again, again, I don't know AIM until I get one in as far as if it's better or on par with the Asus dual display, which I love. The ThinkBook Plus Gen 3 Asus duos have more useful working area. And I, I do like that. And as you know, I've reviewed that in the past. So that's been pretty good. We got 97 of you watching. All right. Uh, will Dell release the XPS 15 and 17 plus? Again, like I said, I don't have any information on what they're planning on the 15 or the 17 or whether they're gonna have a plus version as they just announced with the 13 inch. So we'll have to wait and see. So for those joining us late, uh, Andrew back again with the first live stream of 2022. We're taking a look at what Dell announced at CES 2022. I'm focusing on the XPS plus, XPS 13 plus I should say, and then, of course, I went to New York again. I went for New York for Dell, and then I went back to New York again, left CES, to attend another press briefing from Lenovo. And that's where we got to check out the ThinkBook Gen 3. We got a chance to check out the new Z series from uh, ThinkPad line, the Z13 and the Z16. And then, of course, I checked out the X1 Carbon Gen 10, which is going to be an OLED offering now. They're going to be able to offer that with an OLED glassless display, which is new, a better webcam, 1080p, full HD. And you're also gonna get upgrades to as well to the, um, to the ThinkPad X, uh, X1 Yoga Gen 7. I also got a chance to take a look at the second generation ThinkPad X1 Nano, uh, which are gonna have a much more uh, beefier, robust processor, no longer at the UP4 like last year. You're now getting on par with its bigger siblings, the Carbon and the Yoga. So a lot, a lot to talk about, a lot to digest, a lot to dissect over the next month or so as we wait for review units to come into the channel. Uh, not a fan of the dual display, and we're talking about that ThinkBook here that we, we just took a look at. What, let me know what you think about it. Pretty interesting, different than the e-ink display that we saw on the last gen. Uh, XPS 14 Plus without the touch bar, which is a deal breaker for me. So you'd want a 14-inch 
for is what you're saying. Uh, no announcement yet. I like your reviews. Thank you, Yamil. I appreciate that. People hit the like button as Raphael is asking you to do. It will help get this spread out over YouTube. If you're not already subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button? I got a lot more coming on a, a lot of these 10, oh, sorry, 12 Gen Inter, Intel Alder Lake processors, these new Ryzen 6000 series uh, CPUs that are coming in. We're going to have a lot, lot to talk about. Very, very exciting. This is going to be the year of the laptop 2022. The PC is making a big splash where you have, I think, where you have the mobile phone arena. Pretty boring right now. A lot of, uh, not so much innovation so much, uh, but I think the laptops are where it's at. I think PCs are where it's at in 2022. So it's going to be good for the channel. And there you go. Yes, this is a wide display, as I mentioned, 21 to 9, uh, like the old Toshiba U840W. That's right, Juventus. Um Dual displays don't look good, really. Again, I don't know if it's gimmicky. It might be. Uh, a lot of people love the Asus ZenBook Pro with the dual display, so maybe uh, it'll be something like that. We'll see. Again, dual having dual displays doesn't mean it's actually practical. Just because, and, and I got to give credit to Lenovo for trying different things. You know, they're they're taking a chance with something like this, right? Making it a 17.3 ultra wide display, 60, 21 to nine aspect ratio, like having two displays next to each other. And then of course, putting that eight inch display, secondary display next to the keyboard. Pretty interesting uh, chance they're taking there. And we'll see whether it works or not. We'll, we'll have to, the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see the results once they uh, announce it and release it actually. Can't wait to see Andrew review the new 12th gen laptops. Yes, that's where we're getting them. So stay tuned. This is going to be a good year. Jeremy's asking, Andrew, why wouldn't Microsoft wait for the CES 2022? I think the Surface Pro and the Surface Laptop Studio would have been better devices with the new Intel chips. Uh, good question. I don't think we're going to see anything new from Microsoft on, uh, probably in those arena till uh then in the fall i don't th i'm hearing chip shortages are a problem still so i don't think we'll see a laptop uh five yet and i don't know about the surface pro 9 probably closer to the end of the year or to the holiday season of 2022 so i wouldn't expect anything soon uh again these these are in development uh years in advance so I guess they couldn't make it with the 12th gen uh, with all their testing and everything. So they didn't, Microsoft didn't have any presence there. They pulled out as well. So, you know, there, and I don't know if they're having any event until probably later this year. We'll see. Hopefully they will. Is it a good idea to buy the 9510 right now, the XPS? I, I don't see why not. They didn't announce it. I don't think we'll see an XPS 9510 until either the summertime maybe, or maybe even later. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going off of any uh, actual information I got from Dell. I'm just my guess of uh, way things are right now. They just announced the XPS 13 plus. We'll see how the, the 15 and the 17, we'll see what they do on that uh, when they do make an announcement. So we'll see. Uh, what about the, hi, what about the embargo of Intel or like laptops test? What date do we need to wait? Uh, it just depends on each OEM. Uh, as far as I uh, can get a review unit, I'm waiting on the brands, Dell, HP, Lenovo. I'll have more to say on HP soon as well. Uh, we'll talk about that. Good to see Jan Hendrik. Uh, good to my friend. Happy New Year's to you. And you watched the Michael Jackson Dangerous Tour 1993 and Super Bowl Intermission 1993. New keyboard, Yamaha montage coming, so I need a beast computer. Let's go Rangers. <laughs> okay, there's a lot to digest there. Um I'm glad to see you, my friend. Happy New Year. And I'm glad you like the Michael Jackson Dangerous Tour. And yes, I do like the Rangers. Okay. It seems that the ThinkPad Z series is a direct competitor against the XPS lineup. And I, I think you're correct. I think they're going for the, they're trying to get new users to the ThinkPad line. That was what was told to me. Um, and I think it's a great first try. They look gorgeous, especially with that vegan leather option. There's going to be a black one that's supposed to be spectacularly gorgeous that I did, they didn't have it on display there. They didn't have it ready. I saw only the the metal one or the aluminum one, silver one, and I saw the one with that vegan leather, which looked gorgeous. And we've seen that with HP in the past. We saw that with the 9i, with that glass and leather from last year. So we'll see how that all goes. Didn't HP showcase a, an elite butterfly Chromebook with a 4K option? Yes, we'll talk about that. So I'm gonna do HP separately 
Uh, but definitely, yes. I still choose the Spectre over the XPS line. Again, Spectre, by the way, my full review of the Spectre X360 16, uh, I'm almost done with that. I should drop it probably in a day or so, so stay tuned. Um, check it. They may mention soldered RAM. Again, Bobby, I don't know. Uh, until I open it up, I'll know, or if they say something, I'll let you know. If NV lineups get 16 to 10 aspect ratio at this price point, this, uh, it's selling currently, they would be a pretty good idea. Uh, I like 16 to 10 aspect. You know, that's been my uh, thing for the past year and a half. Uh, 16 to 9 to me uh, is uh, outdated. I like 16 to 10. I think it's a nice blend between performance, uh, rather productivity, consuming media, and stuff like that. Uh, the Del Parry webcam Armstrong tech. Yes, I got a chance to look at it in New York. You could put the, the camera anywhere on the display. Uh, I'm going to have a separate video on that. Yes, I did get a chance to use it. I kind of like it. Uh, it is a concept still. Uh, it's considered a concept device, but I think we're going to, this is one concept that will be coming to market from what I understand. So we'll see how that all works, but it was pretty interesting demonstration they showed us. Uh, Andrew, what do you think of the XPS 13 Plus Touch Bar instead of actual function keys? Did it work well when you played around with it? It did um, surprisingly well. I was really afraid when I first saw it, when they showed me this, I, I was like, whoa, this is a pretty radical design change for the XPS line. Uh, and I didn't quite get it at first. I said, well, there, the trackpad, is this whole thing the trackpad or does it stop at a certain point? And it does uh, between the space bars and the alt keys. You'll see that's where it, it, the... The touch, the haptic touch engine or the haptic touchpad uh, begins and ends. And I thought it was pretty responsive. And I'm actually, the more I use haptic touchpads, the more I like them. And as we go forward, we'll see more. I thought it was very good on the Surface Laptop Studio. I thought it was very good on the Titanium Yoga that I took a look at last year. So those were all pretty, pretty good. 98 of you watching, we've got 90, 104 likes. That's good. So it looks like we got uh good like ratio there what did you think of the new samsung projector i didn't check it out i didn't get a chance to go to samsung this year i limited it because i had to go to new york leave ces go to new york city again for the second time i might as well just move back there it's my hometown anyway um and it was always good to go back to new york and i was able to go to the lenovo i thought it was more important for me to check out lenovo and glad i did it was a, definitely worth it DDR4 RAM, according to uh, Sergey, my Russian, I can read Russian, by the way, for those that are, don't know. I don't speak it very well, a little bit. I'm not Russian, but I did study it. Uh, Sergey says, DDR5 RAM and SSD PCI new gen give more cost for a new laptop. It's sad, I think. And today I didn't see so dim. Yeah, the problem is, uh, Sergey, shortage of DDR5. From what I understand, it was told to me, these are very difficult to get. So a lot of them are still using DDR4. For example, in my review that I just posted of the HP Omen 45L, which has got a Core i9-12900K RTX 3090, that one has DDR4 RAM, not DDR5, just so you know. Sergey is right. See, I can read Russian, Cyrillic. All right. Um, it has been pretty good live stream, right, Rafael? I thought it's been a pretty good live stream which would be sweet spot for 2022 live streams for that games, watching movies, and does some content, full HD 165 hertz or QHD 120 hertz. Uh, obviously, the blend would be the QHD 120 hertz, in my opinion, because you want to do both gaming and watch movies. So you want to have a little bit higher resolution, of course. Um, full HD is good for gaming. Obviously, the higher refresh rate will be good. So QHD 120 hertz, you still get higher resolution. You still get a pretty high refresh rate. So I think that's the best blend uh, to go with on that. And that's just my opinion, of course. So let's. Uh, so that's that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. We've gone already over an hour, um, but I can open it up to questions. I can open up to comments. Uh, Going to CES 2022, let me talk about that a little bit. So I just saw the final numbers. Uh, in 2020, the last one they had in person got about 170,000 attendees. This year, they got 40,000 attendees. And I got to tell you something. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought they planned it pretty well, considering a lot of the brands and a lot of the crappy mainstream media, good riddance, uh, didn't go. And I was able to get the time that I needed to 
to check everything out. There wasn't too many people. It was nicely done. I thought they was taking a lot of safety precautions. My hat off to the CTA that puts this together. I thought they did a great job. Um, and then I think we're, we're, we're the point where I'm glad The Verge and all those assholes didn't go. I'm glad all this uh, old school mainstream media that's outdated, the dinosaurs didn't come and they fucking, excuse me, uh, my language, they were bashing everything. And I was kind of pissed off and said, you know, they took a lot of precautions here. I understand the Omicron was, a bit, was there, but everybody got tested. Everybody was vaccinated and we all got together and I met other creators and we all had a great time. We went out to dinner, we drank, we hung out at the bar. We, I got I got it all. No, yeah, no CS flu is good. That's for sure. But every year I went anyway, I got sick. And so far, knock on wood, I'm negative and I attended and I thought it was good. Um, I thought they did a good job. That's my opinion. And there you go. So The Verge, screw you. <laughs> CNET, screw you. I don't care. I was able to get there and, um, and, I thought it was great. And, and, and I thought they tried to bad mouth it. Oh, how could anybody go and all this? You know, you have your title to your own opinion. You don't have to go. I decided to go and I, it was a good decision. I, I got to meet other uh, YouTubers. I got to meet uh, Tech Lover. No, what was his name? Um, the guy from England. Uh, he's such a nice guy. Uh, lover of Tech. Very good guy. I saw, who's another one that I saw? Uh, Dan Gage, who's great. Um, He's a great, another YouTuber. Um, and then I saw Tech Odyssey, Adam Matlock. He's great. He's fantastic. If you like BlackBerry, you like Pixel stuff, you should go check it out. Uh, I saw a lot of good people there. Uh, I went to a TCL event. Obviously, they make phones and TVs. They invited me to Top Golf, and I kind of had fun with there. We were drinking. They had a taco bar there. And uh, I got to meet all their YouTubers there. I saw uh, David Kogan there. Who else was there? Jaime Rivera. Uh, a lot of other YouTubers. And just a chill kind of environment. Um, hit some golf balls. It was kind of fun. Uh, very, very nice. And my, I want to thank TCL uh, for putting that together. That was really nice. I thought their PR team was great. I thought their marketing team was great. Uh, I thought they did a good job. Um, and again, hats off to Lenovo, who did it in New York. Thank you for having me. I thought it was great uh, for including me. I was there. I think PC World or PC Mag was there uh, doing their thing while I was doing my thing. And then Dell, same thing. I want to thank the uh, marketing team at Dell for uh, allowing me to come to New York as well. So we're going to have more on ASUS and all that. And uh, anything other questions, let me know. I thought AC is the only DDR format of RAM. So ASUS was there. I'm going to do a separate video on that. We're going to do HP. We're going to do Acer, MSI. I met with MSI privately uh, through virtual because they pulled out as well. We'll talk about MSI, Razer as well. We'll talk about that. So, so many things to talk about here in 2022. The year of the laptop, the year of the PC. I think smartphones have gotten a little bit boring, less innovative as the uh, just so many ideas you can do in those. Uh, I think this is going to be the year of the PC innovation, better webcams, better displays. We're going to see better processor, more competition. Intel's back, people, 12th gen. AMD's back with the Ryzen 6000. They didn't go anywhere. They just made it better. We're going to have uh, more stuff. Uh, Apple's going to, I'm sure, going to have their M1 follow-ups as well. And we're going to have a lot to talk about this year, people. So it's been pretty good. Now, I didn't get a chance to go to Samsung only because I didn't go to that event. I was in New York for Lenovo. Um, you know, I don't know about laptops or anything. I, I didn't keep up on that yet. I will look into it. MSI, very good stuff. I have more stuff coming. I have the Delta 15 I'm going to review here. It's got integrated Radeon graphics uh, that look pretty interesting, discrete graphics. I'm not integrated, discrete graphics. And it has a really nice ray, uh, uh, Ryzen processor. Really interesting design. It's called the Delta 15. I will be having that uh, next day or so. So stay tuned. Uh, what about the Samsung Galaxy Note series? Um, the Galaxy Note, uh, we don't know if they're going to call it the Note. They did announce the uh, S21 FE or Fan Edition. I didn't go to that press conference. Again, I was in New York. Uh, kind of curious why they released it now where you're just a month away from their event announcing the S20, uh, the S22. Yeah, the 22, right? Yeah. 
Are we up to the 22? Yeah, the 22, and that's going to be announced. Why would they announce it a month before? And the pricing was kind of interesting. I think it was six ninety nine. Uh, pay a little bit more. Maybe you'll get the new one, you know? So I don't know. We'll see. It's kind of in a weird place. The Spectre series is what it, the, the last I heard of Spectre from HP is the one I got. I bought it. The 16-inch, still running an 11-gen processor. Uh, I didn't hear any new announcements regarding 12th gen on that. I do anticipate they will. Uh, so stay tuned as I get more information on that. 102 watching. And I want to. Uh, I wanted to do a live stream today because I didn't get a chance to do it um, while I was on the road in New York and so forth. So I'm glad I was able to fill you in. So my overall takeaway is the XPS 13 Plus, uh, a very bold design, a pretty, pretty big, interesting design change, again, to accommodate a 28-watt processor, more powerful processor, uh, keeping the same size, the same weight. They had to make some changes. They went with capacitive buttons. They went with, instead of physical function row, they, went, they took away the 3.5-millimeter audio jack, which is going to be uh, controversial, I think, obviously is. And then, of course, uh, performance. I'm looking forward to having an ultra portable with jacked up performance. We'll see how that's going to do. I like the Z series from ThinkPad from Lenovo. That really caught my attention. I think they're going after the XPS crowd in a sense. A gorgeous ThinkPad keyboard on that edge to edge. Uh, they put the track point in there. No physical mouse buttons. Uh, love the vegan leather option. It looks gorgeous. I, it's something I would carry. Portable. The 13 inch is really portable. Uh, I did see the Zen book, the Asus Zen book foldable. Again, uh, we'll see. We'll see how they do with that, if it's going to really be great. What's my dream laptop? It's not, it doesn't exist yet. My dream laptop still have that, I've yet to find. I've gotten close a couple of times. I don't have one yet. If I do, I will let everybody know. Let me take a sip of coffee here. I know I might have talked a little fast today, but I was so excited to get back on to the live stream here. I will be doing videos on these as well. I will be getting all of this, by the way, into the studio to review uh, as this unfolds, as this becomes more available. The vegan leather does not compute. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, we've seen vegan leather, um, Z Black Rider. We've seen it before, right? We saw it with the pull forward design on the HP Folio, Elite Folio that I have. I actually still use it. And then we saw it on the 9i, that version with the glass and leather. The black version was really good. Lenovo mug is upstairs. Uh, I didn't, I, I meant to bring it. I didn't bring it down, but I'll, I'll have it next time. Uh, the, my famous Lenovo mug that I always have, especially when I talk Lenovo products, I try to do that. So uh, it's been pretty good. I thought this CES has been great. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to testing out all the new stuff. Again, there was so much announced this year that I was kind of surprised in a sense. We're coming out of a really weird year in 2021, and we're now going to 2022, but I'm very, very encouraged by what I saw. 12th gen Alder Lake from Intel, 6,000 6, series from the Ryzen from AMD. Very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to what NVIDIA has to offer. I'm looking forward to all these new innovative laptops that we're going to see. I'm glad you like the new studio setup. I'm going to have a formal studio tour, so stay tuned. I hope you guys like it. Behind me over here is the HP NB34. That's an all-in-one desktop that I reviewed on December 31st. I dropped that video. I love it. I think it's great. 5K display, ultra-wide monitor. You could have... Uh, multiple windows side by side has been pretty good. Uh, excellent sound on it. Check out my video. It's doing pretty well. I also dropped the HP Omen 45L. I was under embargo on that. I dropped it when the embargo lift and uh, lifted and I thought uh, the Core i9 12900K, uh, unbelievable performance. Did you guys see the numbers on that with the RTX 3090? Uh, off the chart numbers. Uh, kudos, kudos to everybody on that. That was been pretty good. Am I going to be, uh, did you check out the uh, X14? I did. We're going to be talking gaming on a separate uh, video. I will talk about that very soon. I did check out the X14 from Alienware. Uh, great guys who run Alienware by Waddell. I got a chance to check that out. I have some footage on that. I will be showing that separately. Um, are you planning to doing a live stream on a regular scheduled basis going forward? So I plan to, I just got to figure out the right time. I think I'm going to be doing it on the Saturdays. I think this is going to be a good time. 
The other thing is, I think uh, YouTube is going all in on live streaming. So I want to capitalize on that. I think this is the year YouTube is really going to push live streaming from what I understand. So we already have a head start. We've got a nice base audience. We got 84 people watching right now. I have a nice, healthy live stream audience. I know not everybody likes it, so obviously you don't have to watch. But of course, for those that missed the live stream, you can catch the replay. So We Lay Yang says, I was hoping they would offer the Yoga Carbon 714 for US, but didn't see it in CS advertising. So they are doing a, are you talking about the Think, the Yoga Carbon 14? No, they didn't, they didn't offer that. That's on the yoga line. I will have more to say on that though, so stay tuned, but nothing at CES on that. I didn't get a chance to go check out Gigabyte, uh, Raphael. Um, so I don't have anything to say on Gigabyte. I'm not even sure, did they, I, I maybe I missed it. I'm sure they announced some stuff, but we'll have to catch up on that. Uh, do you prefer the foldable Galaxy series versus the Galaxy S or Note series? Well, I have the Fold 2 here, and you can see it right here. I use my Fold 2 a little bit uh, with the case on it. It's a little bit dirty. Uh, I had the Fold 3, but I didn't keep it because the Fold 2, I didn't think it was enough of a change to warrant um, going with the Fold 3. I just didn't see enough for me to justify the expense. So I still have the Fold 2, and I do like it. I actually like the Surface Duo 2 a lot, by the way, a lot. We'll talk more of that about soon. Uh, what, Sergey, what was your message? What about OLED? Is that what you're talking about? What about OLED screen and PWM effect? Again, I don't, I couldn't, I didn't have it, I didn't have a chance to use it long enough to test all that stuff. Uh, PWM is certainly a problem for certain people. Uh, so PWM is pulse width modulation. You'll see some people can get eye strain from that. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll have it. Well, well, I don't know. We'll see once we test it. Uh, so hopefully that answered your question. Uh, according to Marcel, how would you rate Windows 11? Does Windows 11 work properly? Is it worth to upgrade from Windows 10? I've had no problems with Windows 11. Uh, I've upgraded. Uh, this is my Dell. You can see here, this is my Dell XPS 15. Uh, 9510 and I, I it's running Windows 11 and it's working pretty well so uh, not too many bugs or anything I didn't notice anything so yeah I mean I, I'm okay with Windows 11 uh, I'm okay with it all right so we got 85 of you watching let me just check the stream here real quick um let me just make sure everything looks okay it looks i mean look it looks like it's okay we have a pretty good turnout today uh probably going to wrap it up in about a minute or so let me just take a look um so that was pretty much what i had to see when i went to new york uh twice and then of course as i'm here back in las vegas here for cs 22 which wrapped up yesterday i thought they did a good job uh, i have no complaints on that i thought it was pretty good on that note, people, I think we're going to call it a live stream. Uh, I will plan to do one on a regular basis going forward. I think this is a good time only because we got such a good turnout today. Maybe just people were interested in the Dell XPS 13 Plus, my take on it maybe. And of course, the Z series from the ThinkPad line from Lenovo. Uh, those two really caught my attention and I thought those were really good. Now, as far as all the other stuff, the ThinkBook Plus, Gen 3 and the um, all the other stuff, the Lenovo Yoga 9i, all got upgraded. Uh, I thought they were good upgrades physically as far as the uh, aesthetics and, of course, internally moving to 12th gen. Of course, uh, on the Z series, I'm glad they're using this AMD 6000 series Ryzen's, of course. Uh, that looks really, really good. We're going to have more to talk about it, a lot to talk people uh couldn't get all to all your questions uh jedediah how do you feel about the xps 13 plus you know we can wrap it up here with this but i would say design wise looks gorgeous absolutely gorgeous with the display option of course the oled and that uh and the fact that it still retains that that really sleek xps 13 aesthetics that i absolutely love you know that on the downside, I want to see what this uh, capacitive touch bar on a everyday use is going to do. And of course, lack of a 3.5 millimeter audio jack might piss off some people, especially if you're using wired headphones. Uh, doesn't affect me personally because I've moved to Bluetooth pretty much, excuse me, pretty much excuse, exclusively. 
Uh, so it really remains to be seen. I am encouraged that it is a 28 watt CPU. Of course, we need to test thermals. We need to test performance and how if there's any thermal throttling. And of course, battery life. How efficient are these 12th gen uh, higher wattage CPUs? I'm, I'm expecting good things. Uh, Andrew, thank you very much for answering um, our questions. I'm looking forward to watching my videos for the future. I wish 2021 a great year for you. And you too, my friend, Gazim. And that is my cue. I will uh, see everybody, of course, in the next video. I will perhaps do another live stream to catch up on all the other brands. A lot of announced at CS 2022. Too much for one live stream. It's already almost an hour and 20 minutes. So uh, I will wrap it up here. I want to thank all the moderators for doing such a great job on moderating the chat. For those that I missed your chat, I'm so sorry. I, I could try to do my best to get to everybody. But uh, for those of you that are joining us, have a happy and healthy 2022. And it's great to have my first live stream under the belt and get ready to go with a lot of videos on the way. So until next time, people, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.